Well, I gotta get ready for the next project here. Well, I think it's time to clean the garage. Okay, so let's clean this garage. That should do it. Hey guys, hey, thanks for coming to the channel. Hey, today's video is gonna be on this 1969 to 70 Z50. Yeah, buddy. Uh, the gentleman, long, little story, I'm gonna try to make it short. Uh, I fixed his friend's Honda 90. Well, he, want, he goes, hey, I got a Z50 that I haven't ridden in almost 35, 40 years. I, probably even longer. When he was a kid, he looks older than me. Sorry, guy. Uh, he said he, he and his friends were riding this thing all over the place, and then they parked it, and he hasn't touched it since. It's an almost immaculate shape. I mean, it's dirty, and but this is about the same shape as it was in when they parked it. All he wants me to do, he doesn't want me to fix it up. It drives me nuts, though. I want to bend the handlebars out, fix the tail light, fix it all up. But it's not mine. He just wants me to get it running because he wants it like he was when it was a kid. He wants to be a kid again. His memories. So I'm proud to do this because I'm excited to see his face when I have this running and he can ride it again. He wants to ride it to get mail and ride to the barn and stuff. So this guy, I can't wait to get this done for him because it just warms my heart. I love it. So, what we gotta do, we're gonna have to fix these forks. Now, the bushings are gone in here too. I, they're bent and the bushings are gone. Before I buy new ones, or a set of good used ones, I'm gonna see if I can straighten these out. We're gonna try. And then I got some bushings I can put in here because the bushings are bad. And, uh, and just get it running. We're gonna get, clean up the points, see if the carburetor's cleaned out, but I can tell you what. They were smart. That gas tank is like brand new inside. No gas in it. So that is an easy job. Hopefully it's like that. Anyway, let's get into this video. But you know what? First, Dino stopping by. So don't forget to watch the end of this video. Because you'll have to see what Dino and I went through at the end of the video. You're going to like it. All right, guys. All right, let's get into this. Let's get this in the end. Look, man. Let's get this thing going. Alright, and hey, I'm wearing my Doc Neon shirt, but I'm going to change this so I don't get it dirty. I'm going to keep my Doc Neon. In fact, hang on guys, let me show you what Doc made me. <clears throat> my Honda Trail 70 sign, I love it. Yes siree. Thanks Doc, I appreciate that. Got to check him out, check out his videos too that uh, Terrell made with him making these neon signs. Turo and him, awesome video, so you gotta go check that out too. Anyway, let's get going here. Yeah, a lot of work to do. All right guys, first thing we're gonna do, we got it on the lift. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cover off. Uh, the reason why is because the Kickstarter's not on it, so I'm gonna have to get a Kickstarter and put a Kickstarter on the thing so uh, we can start it. But I'm gonna do something that I suggest you guys don't do. I'm a redneck, I'm gonna do it. But I'll show you here in a minute what I'm doing. I see this don't have the proper screws, but there's three screws. One, two, and three. So I'll put the proper screws in it, but I'll put these in a bag for him in case he just wants these original screws back in it like he had it. But I'm gonna put the proper screws in that actually belong in that cover. These uh, 10 millimeters here. These are actually nuts. Gotta actually have screws, not nuts. I'm not nuts. No. <laughs> Camera girl thinks I'm nuts. I've been nuts ever since I was born. Yeah. So, all right, we'll see what it looks like under this cover. Hmm. Little bit of dirt there. Look at how, I wonder how old that dirt is. That's been in there for a long time. Make needles nice and clean. All right, so what I want to do to check spark, get myself the 17 millimeter, that's 18. That ain't gonna be proper. We have construction going on outside. The wife's getting her daily garden uh, plowed right now. 
tillug, whatever you want to say. I guess that's not the proper word. Till. <laughs> All right. Now there's an arrow on here which way this does turn. See right here is a little arrow. Right there. Turns this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So if I got a spark plug. Now the reason why I say this is dangerous, if it were to start, I said this in other videos before, if it were to start, you could, the drill could come out of your hand, break your wrist, could break this, get something in your eye, whatever. But I'm doing this at my own risk, guys. So, because I can't really kick stuff anymore because I have bad knees from jumping motorcycles all my life. And crash landing. Yes, crash. You know, I was actually called crash a long time ago because <laughs> the first couple weeks, all I did was crash. So don't call me crash for a uh, now you can call me that. So anyway, now what I'm going to do, believe it or not, guys, this still has the key in it. Can you imagine that? So I'm going to turn the key on. This doesn't have any handle wires on it. Get behind you, candy girl. Camera girl. Take my spark plug out. Yep. I my little something plug wrench here. Can I do it by hand? Can I do it? Ah, nope. Of course not. Normally I, I would do this with the, the drill, but or the impact. I'll just do it with this. The impact's occupied right now. Oh. Yeah, it's got some carbon foul to it. Put it on that side so I can see. Alright. I doubt it has any spark. I'll be shocked if it does. Holy buckets in the head that's got spark after all these years. Holy bucket! Well, now that is different. It's that those are points. That shows you this thing's definitely been in a dry atmosphere. Well, of course, if you guys should know how to check your points, make sure they're set right, they should just crack open on the F mark. So on top of your flywheel, holy bucks, don't tell me this don't have, oh, there they are. All right, I'll put the light up there. You got a T mark, then you got an F mark. Yeah, to make it easier for you, grab yourself a pen and just mark what you're doing right now, which is that line right there. That's the F mark, which is for points, filament. T is for timing, that's for your timing chain. So right now, I just want to do that. And it goes to the top of the line of the motor right here. There's a little slot in the, in the block. Now, she's going to zoom in a little bit more. Right there. Look at that. Camera girl's like hit me because I'm touching the, the camera. All right, so now you, what you want to go do is inside here. Just move on down. And inside there's your points, and they should just be cracking open at the F mark. And I'm trying to look behind the camera. Yep. Perfecto. They are open, start opening right at that uh, time. Now, you, there's a way of using a timing mark, uh, timing light, I think. But well, I've never done it. I just did it this way. So... All right, uh, well, let me get a good spark plug, and just for the fun of it, I'm going to spray a little ether in there and see what it does. Hang on. I know there's a good spark plug in here somewhere. I've got these, but these are weird. So. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to check the gap on these. I know they're in a drawer. I've got brand new spark plugs. Don't worry, guys. I'm not, I'm not that much of a redneck. I use spark plugs out of a drawer. There we go. 
Okay, there, that's like brand new, but yeah, the gap don't look bad. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> that's just my. I don't know what you call it. But that's just. Well, never mind. Let's just. Just never mind. Let me go over here. Let's look at it. Now, you should always put these in by hand because you don't want to cross thread it. It's aluminum head. Do as far as you can. As long as you get a few threads in there, yeah, you know you're good. In fact, I'm not even going to like super tighten it because I'm just going to end up putting a brand new spark plug in it anyway. So, all right. Let's see if this thing licks off. Can of my uh, dinosaur. Well, this one ain't dinosaur juice. I would just say it's chemical juice that will fire it up. Oh wait, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. But it ain't fire it up. As Elks kids would say. <laughs> so, all right. Squirt a little bit in here into the carburetor. You know, I really probably should check that carburetor. You know what? It's just this thing has sat for so long. Let me get a light here again, camera girl. I'm gonna pull the air cleaner off because sometimes those air filters can come apart and I don't want that to get sucked into the carburetor and into the head, stuck in the valves. Let me get yourself more of a job. <clears throat> yeah, we'll check that out a little bit. Ah, uh, yep. <clears throat> oh yeah, good thing I did that. Look at that. <clears throat> Filters crumbling, so yeah. Think first. All right. <clears throat> choke on, choke off. Let's get some in that hole. All right, now where's my little death trap here? And she wants to point at the hole right there. All right, let's see what she does. First time, and like who knows how long this thing has been licked over. Ooh! You know, I'm gonna do that one more time. I wanna get a little more out of that. Well, guys, sounds like she'll run. All right. It's amazing. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to flip this bowl off here. I might change this line for him because this line, look at that. That thing is loose. It's got a weird... I bet I could pull it right off. Yeah, I don't like this line. That's too dangerous. Starts leaking, drops in the motor, heat up, could cause a fire. So I'm going to put a new line on it after all this time. Oopsie. Take that off. Of course, I'll save that stuff for him in case he wants originality. Alright, now you just take this and flip it like that give this thing a quick little oh yeah that's can you hear that crunchy sounds like when you get up in the morning <laughs> my <Hey>. back <laughs> so carefully without bending that wow you guys I'm sorry this will probably actually be a pretty short video because everything's working out great on this thing. This carburetor actually looks decent inside. But you know what? Just for the fun of it, I'm still going to pull the carb off. I want to clean uh, the idle air jet out, make sure this is clear. Because um, nine times out of ten, those idle air jets are clogged anyway. It's, it's not a big deal to pull this off and check it. So give me a moment. I'm going to pull this carburetor off, and I'll show you that. Get yourself a little screwdriver. Get in here to take the idle air out. 
we're gonna chuck that bad boy. Look at that little thing. That big monster hand of mine. Looks like a grain of sand. But I'm gonna chuck this and see. Yeah, believe it or not, guys, it's actually clear. I have my little wire brush wire sitting over here. If you already watch any of the previous videos, you see how I actually made a wire brush and use it as a So what I need to do is take the grinder, put a little edge on here. Kind of putting a drill point on that. Just to make sure it's nice and clear. And you can see it's nice and clear. All right. Well, I could say this carburetor is actually good to go. I'm not even going to bother with this because I know that's clear. Screw back in there. I think I'll give this a little bit of carb clean spray. Carb cleaner. Oh, look at that. Thing don't work. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to fix a can that doesn't have any more air in it. It's dangerous, it'll blow up in your hand, but watch, I'll show you. Hey. We're going to watch it blow up? Yeah. Coming? Uh, yeah. Now what I do is these cans that are flat and still have a lot of juice in it. Camera girls back up. She's afraid it's going to blow up on uh -huh. Take this. Push in. It's better with a rubber tip. I don't know where my rubber tip one is, so. Oh my! Look at that! Woo! So don't try that at home. Too dangerous. Could blow up in your hand. Okay. You know, I should be wearing my rubber gloves, but you know me. I'm ADHD. Oh yeah, wait. So this would I said to need it. Okay, I'm gonna put this puppy back together. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the bike. And then see if the thing's gonna start. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this thing original, just like it was when he parked it. You know, I'm not gonna clean the whole carburetor up, just the inside, make sure it runs for him. That way it's the same as it was when he parked it. But when he was youth, so this thing, got to make sure it goes in the right way. I made that mistake with the, hey, remember that uh, two-cycle one I put in backwards? It was like, nee, nee, nee. <laughs> I should do that again. What? Nee. Ah. All right. Hey, but it ran. All right. Now, guys, I wanted to tell you this too. When I was taking these out, the the bolts that he does have in here are way too short. And it was barely grabbing. You know when you put it in, and you only see that much sticking up, well, it's going to strip. So I'm actually going to try to find the proper bolts that actually go in this head. So give me a moment. I'll be right back. All right. So as you can see, that's just not much longer but just enough that it's gonna grab the threads. Now when I set that back in here, put a little light on it. 
See how much more that sticks up? That's going to give you a lot more threads without worrying about stripping it out. So. And believe me, I've done it. You know, with the little short ones, they'll strip out. Then you got to do all kinds of stupid stuff to get it right again. All right, guys, I'm going to tighten this down. We'll get some fuel on there. And uh, we'll see how well, if it will start. All right, guys, so I put my little spare tank that I took off a roller tiller or something years ago. I don't know. But, you know, I put a little bungee cord on there. Thing works great for when you're doing jobs without one if you don't want to put gas in the gas tank. And I got a little filter on there, a little shut off valve into the carburetor. We got the gas on right now. And I checked it already, opened this up, and a little bit of gas came out of here. So we now we know it's filled with gas. The float's working good because it ain't overflowing, it ain't overflowing out of here. It's drier on the carburetor. I got the choke on, keys on. Contact! Contact! Let's see if this thing's gonna go with the killer girl. See if she's gonna run. That was kind of cool. I, this thing's sad. I'm gonna guess 35 years. Could have been more. But I'm gonna start this after 35 years. I want to hear this thing run. And you're gonna hear this run first time after 35 years. I need to adjust the idle air on it. Yeah! 35 years! First time starting up. Wow. Running rich though, I can hear it. guys really running rich and my guess if I can guess is that um, the slide needle is up too high I'm going to show you that so you pull your slide out it shall come out This thing right here, I think, is up too high. So if you want to take this off, you push down, get your cable out, watch your spring. Get your spring going to go doing, doing, doing. And then, oh yeah, it's up way too high. Push on this. It pulls it out. Don't lose your little clip right here. So you have the clip. And you have your your little um, needle valve. Now, your needle valve it has these little slots. You might have to do a real super in zoom like I do. 
yeah, like that, you know? Like that. Now, I'll turn it up a little bit. I don't know if you could see, but there's little slots in that. Damn it, you move too much. I know, I'm shaking. <laughs> so, and it's at the last one. It's up way too high. If I remember right, it's only supposed to be from the second one down. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna pull that off. Carefully with my big fingers. All right, got that off. Now, I don't have my spectacles on. I think I'm in the right position there. I need some light here. Everything's blue. Blue? <laughs> Everything turned blue, sorry. Now, it's hard to tell, but I think I got it at the top one. But we're gonna try it there. I'm gonna put this back together. Problems in paradise. <laughs> and then your little M or W, whatever you want to call it here, goes in between that slot like this. They're not fun to get in. Trust me, I know. Especially when you got big fingers. You got little fingers, you're, you're, you're good. You're golden. I push it in like that. Try to get that bugger in there the way it should be without being interfering with the slot. We got it. So, put the, the spring inside. The cable goes inside the spring. Pull back. Go into your slot. Voila. Just like that. So, let's put this puppy back in the right way. Get a feeling around till it gets in there. All right. All right, let's see how this thing runs now. Electric start, contact. Love better. I'm trying to get low idle and then the idle air, I'm adjusting until I hear the highest point. There you have it. Running after 35 years, purrs like a kitten. Didn't even have to clean the points on the carburetor. Amazing. Now I haven't shipped it yet or anything, and we'll see how that thing goes. But the next thing I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try to straighten out these forks. I don't know. I should buy some, but I couldn't find any yet. I even went to Mid Ohio. 
I know I can go online and get them, but since the guy likes the original equipment, I'm going to see if I can straighten these out. But I am going to have to replace the bushings in here. But let's get this apart, and I'll show you guys how to take care of this part. Well, I guess i got to raise it up. Is, uh, we're going to take this front wheel off. And look how dangerous that is. It sure is loose, ain't it? So I'm gonna have to pull these covers off. First thing we'll do, let me get stuck, get in ahead of myself. All we're gonna do is take this front wheel off. All you're gonna need here is a Phillips screwdriver. 19 millimeter. We'll get this wheel off. Then we'll work on this fork on this side here. 18 millimeter. Bingo. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I was thinking, guys, I'm sorry. You know, I should film this because, you know, perhaps maybe none of you guys ever uh, took off a front wheel before. A lot of you have. But for the ones that haven't, I like to use a Phillips screwdriver. Crash me professionally. Slip it in that hole. 19 millimeter. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Takes that bolt right off. Now don't forget, you do have a spacer right here. In between there, and there's no spacer on this side. <clears throat> so, you have a spacer in between here. So when you slide this out, let me get around the camera. That spacer is going to fall out, just like that. Slides out really nice. Of course, now this don't have a brake cable on the front. So normally this will probably hang right here. Or you can just take it off. So we got that off. And your front wheel. It's a little... Hasn't been used in a long time, I can tell you that. All right. Well, let's get this apart. See what kind of damage we got in here. This is going to be tough to get apart. It looks like it's uh, someone's already did some teeth mark on it. So let me see if we can get this loose. What I like to grab, I can see someone grabbed up here. Well, this is the part where you'll see. Typically, this rubber piece will go over this whole thing right here. Now, there is a special tool for this if you want to use it. It goes in this little hole here and here and you can turn it. Me, I'm just using a pair of vice grips. I'm going to try to just grab on this meaty part right here. Not up here because then you'll see that you've been taking that off. And yeah, it's a little tough. It's been on there for all or so long. But she is turning. There we go. I think you'd probably use a better pair of vice grips here. So, it's turning now. So let's get this off here. And this still won't come out until I take off the bolt on top. I'll show you that in just a moment. Alright, so we're on the finishing touches here. And voila. Now, in here... If I remember correctly, there's plastic inserts. And they're in there good. Let me do a little tap in here. Well, the next thing we're going to take off, you're going to have to take this bolt off right here, which is 14 millimeter. And then your shock should come out. Well, not shock, but your front fork here. So let's get this removed and see how that goes. Let's remove this bad boy. This 14 millimeter. And now she's already starting to drop out. But 
I know we're gonna have a little bit of a tough time getting this out because it's all jammed in there. Here it comes. Coming through and it's pretty gooky guys, look at that. That's pretty monstrous and ugly. That's going to be definitely a lot of cleaning. Well, let's get this thing out. Let's see how it goes. I'll be right back. Cut it out. And you can see it's bent pretty good right here. And then sure this is worn out. I'm going to see if I have a new set of these or a good set of used ones. But if you want to know how this comes off, it's pretty simple. There's a pin in here covered in grease. Of course, there's a pin which is right there. Should be able to push it out from the other side. Since this one's sticking up, I'm going to use a pair of needle nose and just pull it out. Just like that. And then this thing should come off just like that. Oh dear. That's broken. Hmm. I'll have to see you have another one of those. Then this should slide off. like this. Of course, all this stuff should slide off. Oh yeah, you can see the bend in that thing. I think I can get this bend out of here, guys. To be honest with you. So, let's take this off. And we'll experience this ourselves. I've got a pipe vise. I'm gonna try to get that out. You know, in case you have no access to getting anything, if you wanna to try to straighten it out, we're gonna do so. All right. I got this part cleaned up. Got all this nasty grease off it. Of course, you see where it's broke there. Looks like someone's tried getting this off before. I see the little teeth mark on it. But we're going to take this out. I'll show you how to take this out of the spring. Because I have another one that I found on my part stuff that we could use. It's supposed to look like this. So this should be able to just twist right out of the spring. And we're going to do that. Camera girl, she's not here tonight right now because she's actually, well, she is here, but she's in the house and uh, she's getting ready to do some uh, wings. We're gonna have we have every Friday night is wing night here. Oh yeah, I love wing night. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? There's two flash spots on the on the springs here. Let me get it in the camera view here. Flash spot here, flash spot here. We're going to stick it in a vise. Actually, I'm going to turn it. I can see where that is. So, I'm going to stick this here. Whatever way is easier for you. Get it nice and snug. Like that. And just kind of twist it. And now screws just like that, boys. Put the new one on. I'm just going to do the same thing. Pay attention where your hole was. If it really matters, but doesn't pair the. I don't think this one matters. Same. Okay. Just double checking myself because this one's out of a Trail 70. And they seem to use the same parts from time to time. Flat side here, flat side here. 
All right. I think all I'm going to have to do is actually uh, screw the spring on. Da -da -da -da. Man, we're screwing it on. And uh, that's it. And you got your new piece in there. You give us a little bit of a snug here. And we're done. Fork tube. Now, my vise has a pipe. It's a pipe vise, so it actually will grip onto this. Let me zoom out. Wearing these gloves and trying to zoom out. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in the pipe vise this way and bring this in close to where the bend is. As close as I can, right where the bend starts. So, I don't wanna go super cranky tight because I don't wanna damage this. So, Moving right along here, I gotta find a pipe or something here to use. Hmm, let's figure out what am I gonna use? Aha! Ah, that's what I use. <laughs> Off a jack. What I wanna do is put this right over that. So slid on that right to the end of the jack or to the vise. What I'm gonna do see how much tension this thing is gonna need. I'm pulling right now. I feel it going back. I can see the way this is. It's not quite straight yet. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit more. Looks starting to look good. Can't believe I'm actually doing that. Make sure this is tight again. Give this a little more bend. All right, so move the camera a little bit for a better angle. Remember there? Now, the way this is looking to me, it's looking pretty straight, so. Yeah, that came out pretty good. Now I'm gonna give this thing a roll test on a flat table. There's a little bit of a gap yet there, see? I'm turning it, and there's flat, then it opens up the gap again. It's just a little bit more, so I'm gonna Try it one more time, just try to get that perfect and see what happens. Now I gave it one more snug there. You know, I see just a hair gap, but you know what? I think just gonna let it go with that. So it's not perfect, but I'm still using the original equipment and if I don't, I can't find one of these, that's what I can do. Now, I'm sure I find these online fairly cheap, probably aftermarket or used. Let's put this thing back together. Now that it's reassembled, nice and tight now, not loose. She's uh, pretty good for the original equipment and it looks nice and straight. Now I'm gonna do this side. See, this one's still real bad i'm probably going to replace this boot that way dirt doesn't get up in here when he's riding it so i'm going to show you how to straighten this out because if you don't have a pipe vise if you have a regular vise let me show you how to do that so let me get this out i'll do that instead of the pipe vise one this came out all right for using the original equipment bending it out without having to buy a new one i mean yes it needs a new one it could use a new one but this works for not be restoring the bike right now. All right. Okay, so 
Now this is how I just put it in a vise. You can see the bend curve here. It pretty much starts right here. And then I'm gonna have to use a shorter pipe because I got this here. So I'm gonna be very careful when I do put this on here, bend this. And it's moving. So I'm gonna carefully do this. Gotta make sure it doesn't crease here. Gotta watch that, that it's not gonna catch here and crease. So keep an eye on it if you wanna bend this out. Well, I'm very pleased the way this has come out. It looks pretty straight to me. I'm not gonna be able to do the table test on it. But as I was bending, what I would do was I'd go in just a little bit each time, just cause uh, it wanted to crease in one spot. So I just kept going, pushing this in, loosen it, pushing a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more as I was going. Just keep your eye on it when you're bending on it pulling on this here as you keep pulling and from here it looks pretty straight now so I think we did okay on this so now I got myself another uh, bushing I used one fairly good shape not too shabby these are the old ones which are pretty shot. Uh, I've got another used rubber just to keep the dust dirt out of it. I did replace this because this was busted for this one. Apparently this one's okay for the other side, which is right here. Oh, I can see the seal in there is kind of bad, so I'm gonna clean that out. And I have another bushing and we're gonna reassemble this. Now that I got it just all assembled here, I got the other boot on, this, the new, there's a new rubber, and I got this one out that was actually in ring, O-ring like, that I replaced. That was bad too. Got this on, a new plastic thing here. Now remember when you reassemble this, if you're putting the pin back in here, this little pin on top, right here, it's got to go on the inside of the handlebar. It goes with this. So it's pointed on the inside of this handlebar. Let me show you on a... Uh, let me find one. A fork. <sighs> See how the little groove there? They're pointed on the inside. So you're going to want to make sure that this here will be on the inside when you're putting it back in. It's going to go in like this. All right. Now, I'm going to lube all this up with grease and put it back on. Now that it's all assembled, that whole front end is a whole lot tighter now. No more wiggy, wiggy, wobbly, wobbly. And it's straight. Not bent. I'll put another rubber on this one just to keep the dust out of it and dirt. This one I had to tape because it is ripped, but I don't want to put another one on. I'm trying to keep all his original equipment. So, there we go. I think he's going to be happy. But uh, I'm going to fine tune this bike, get it all finished up, and... I can't wait to see his face when he sees it run. I really can't. I love it. This is exciting. So, anyway, I got so many more projects to get done before you know. Before that comes. So, once we get all that done, September, but probably going to go to the Burton Fair, you know. Maybe get some gyros, you know, I'm hungry. It's early yet, it's only 10.30 in the morning. So, ignition. Hey, I didn't hear the choke on, ain't that cool? I've been 
big guy and this tiny little thing. Well, we'll see how this goes. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Stay tuned. Stay tuned now. Watch what Dito does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Look at her. Dito's up to something. <laughs> Let's see what he's up to. Hey, uh, hey, dude, can I peel this off? What? Can I, can I peel this off? You, you're missing one over there, and it, it just, it, it's, it doesn't match. It's, it doesn't match. Can, can, I, can, can I peel it? Dude, well, you, you already started. Because it doesn't match. So, well, just, just go ahead. You, you've done it already. Okay, cool. I, go ahead. Oh, I, ooh, ooh. Oh. Now, is that satisfying? You like that? Yeah. Yeah, good. All right. Where are you going? What? You got to do the other side. Oh, it doesn't match. I forgot. Yeah, you like that, huh? You happy now? Dito. Why? Not, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but it, it just doesn't that. Whatever that word is for that, it just doesn't. Isn't it called COD or DOD? OCD? OCD! That's it! You're OCD! Yeah, it's charged. Well, it's it, now it's not match. All we got to do is get the, get the view off. And, well, hey, I don't know why I care this much about your truck. Well, I, know. I mean, but it just it didn't match. It would be like emblems on one side of the truck and not on the other side of the truck. It just you can only see one side at a time, but it just it would bother me. You want to do the brakes on the other side now and then wash it and wax it? Well, honestly, you should really do the rotor on the other side of the truck rather than just half of it. I, I mean, don't want to do half of it. I'm tired. I'm gonna go right hands and I'm done. Done. Yeah. You know, I just might do this other rotor because it just it doesn't matter. Have to have I'm gonna do it. <laughs>